June 1935. After much theorizing and practice in clinics for the privileged, the moment for action has finally arrived. Volterra is the right place. It's an avant-garde hospital, the perfect place for a doctor who really wants to make a difference. November 20th. Crossing the threshold of the asylum was similar to entering another dimension. A world of smells, noises, and images, which it is almost impossible to imagine, describe, or explain. August 1936. The situation is similar to that in many other institutions. The department is overcrowded. Hundreds of patients are supervised by a handful of nurses who are forced to tie the more distressed ones to their beds or to radiators. They do 24-hour shifts. It's impossible to work like this. We doctors rarely see the female patients, and it's the nurses who tell us what's happening to the women. The overpowering stench in the wards, the constant din of shouts and voices that are barely recognizable as human, dirty, naked bodies devoid of any dignity. The lunatic asylum gets under your skin and wears you down. I often consider resigning. I feel useless, impotent, a sort of merciful jailer, a mercy that helps no one and only helps to ease my conscience. March 15, 1938 Dramas are played out before my eyes every single day, and I try to distance myself from them, and just do the best I can. But a girl arrived some days ago. I couldn't avoid her gaze. All she asked in her dignified silence was not to be ripped away from her world. And me. I'm old enough to be her father, the father she never had, who didn't want her, who rejected her without even knowing her. I, too, refused what she asked me. I couldn't do anything but add my signature and consign her to hell. A danger to herself and to others, and a cause of public scandal. This was what was written on the accompanying note from the police headquarters. It was difficult not to agree with it. How much more violence must this poor girl be subjected to? Her gaze is so intense, so far removed from the carefree nature which should be the joyous hallmark of her age. I cried myself to sleep, in my solitude. I kept thinking about those sad and frightened eyes staring at me.